Hi guys, uh, I wanted to take a few moments to uh, put into an actual presentation uh, one of the concepts I was talking about in a previous webisode or live broadcast, I can't remember which, but it was about, I, I did a, a rough diagram of the cycle of distorted negative thinking and how it perpetuated itself. And I tried to explain it there, but I wound up deciding to um, actually go ahead and produce a visual aid. And this is what follows is a presentation that will explain in detail uh, the concepts that I was trying to uh, impart in that previous webisode. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope it makes sense above all, and I hope it helps. So check it out. We're first going to examine the stimuli response cycle. Now, since we're talking about a cycle, it makes sense to use a wheel as a representation of what this cycle is going to be. You got the hub of the wheel, you got spokes, you got the outside of the wheel. It helps. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'm giving you a visual representation of what this cycle is ultimately going to be consisting of. Feelings, emotions, thoughts, actions, consequences, positive or negative, including the outside stimuli. So to start this off, we have the outside stimuli or stressors. Now these can be either positive or negative. You can have outside stimuli or stressors, positive or negative stressors. An example of a negative stressor is losing a job or a death in the family. An example of a positive stressor is a wedding day or a baby shower, positive or negative. These outside stimuli or stressors immediately engage your feelings. If you had a bad day at work or you lost your job, you're going to feel sad. If you're having a birthday party or a wedding shower, you're going to be happy positive or negative. This in turn brings your emotions into play. Now the word itself, emotion, it it's recognizes an action involved. So you lost your job, your feelings are sad, so you're going to be depressed. So there's a little action to it. From your emotions you move into your thoughts. Now these are the things that you think in your mind the things that you're telling yourself, be they positive or negative. These are the elements of the inner dialogue that you have with yourself. And it's a crucial moment, and you'll see why later. Once you've had the thought, then your mind begins to focus on what it wants to do. The next step is actions. So your thoughts become your actions, what you do, either positive or negative, constructive or destructive. It's all up to you. The actions we take thus have consequences, either positive or negative. If we are doing things constructively, then we get constructive results. If we do something destructively, then we're going to get destructive results. So it's all balance. You can see by the arrows on the diagram that this has all been a progress going. But this part right here is where we really ratchet it up and go around the moon with the gravity well. It's where the consequences, whether they're positive or negative, go back to having a, a bearing on our feelings. So not only do we deal with the consequences, positive or negative, of our actions, but now we also have to deal with even further outside stimuli and stressors. Hey, so give yourself a break and uh, let yourself process what I just went over. And then we're going to go to part two, the cycle of distorted thinking, and examine that. So to examine a negative, distorted thinking pattern, let's start from the bottom. Let's say the outside stimuli stressor is losing a job. That's a negative stressor that will no doubt have an effect on your feelings. 
the loss of your job may make you feel mad or sad. Now we know that this model separates feelings and emotions and there's a reason for that which we'll touch on in a bit. Suffice it to say your feelings in response to outside stimuli or stressors is automatic, involuntary, and uncontrollable. You receive a stress, you have a feeling. So now you've moved from being mad or sad about losing your job and the emotions you're experiencing will be anger and depression. Again, a little action involved. Your negative feelings are now manifesting in the emotions that plague you. It seems as unavoidable as a feeling, but we'll touch on that also coming up. Now you can sort of see how the feeling and emotion develop into a thought. And we know action isn't far behind, but for a second, divorce your mind from the notion that a thought need to lead to an action per se, but more like the things we tell ourselves in our inner dialogue, the thoughts that now dominate us. That boss is a punk, he had no business laying me off. I'm worthless now without a paycheck. I'm gonna wind up a bum on the street. I deserve this because I'm pathetic. All this negative shit, which leads us to The action you take based on your inner dialogue. Boss a punk? You go and punch him in the face. Destructive rather than constructive or productive. You're worthless, youthless, a bum? You want to numb the pain because we as humans try to avoid pain at all costs. So you drink a 12 pack and drive to your friend's house and you'd have fire hydrant on the way. Which drops us right off nicely into consequences. The music we have to face for the shit we do. So you got mad, then angry, said your boss was a punk, and punched him in the face. Now he's pressed charges. All your former co-workers think you're psychotic, and it ruins your chances of finding another job. You got drunk and drove, you hit a hydrant, drunk. Guess what? Now not only is your car total, but you had to spend the weekend in jail, and you've got a DUI. Consequences. Negative. So now, witnessing the whole negative cycle develop from the beginning, we can now see how each element, when filtered negatively or with a negative lens, feeds and perpetuates itself and basically poisons our lives. It's cunning, baffling, powerful, as the big book says, but there is a way out of it, and we're going to dis discover that next. And now in part three, we're going to be discussing how to break the cycle of distorted thinking in a practical, simple way. So in the last section, we examined how the negative, depressive, distorted cycle of thinking feeds on itself and everyone's questions got to be, how do I break this? The better question, since we're talking about a cycle, is where do I break it? There's a suggestion that the time to do it is between the thought and the action. Reasoning being that thinking is one thing, doing is another, but can actually start sooner than that, if you think about it between the emotion and the thought. As we know, we have the stimuli or stressor, and you can't avoid how it makes you feel, but believe it or not, you can exert control over your emotional response to it, and therefore what it makes you think. It sounds impossible, but there are a few simple methods that, with practice, should yield results. So let's continue with the negative stressor model, the getting laid off stimuli. It still makes you sad or mad, your feelings, you can't control that. Now here is where you stop to determine what emotion to choose, and also how that emotion will affect your inner dialogue. You may be mad or sad, but that doesn't have to make you angry or depressed. First, try to focus on the things you're grateful for to put the brakes on the negative emotion. You can do this by doing a grounding exercise, which I'll give you an example of. This is an example of a grounding exercise that you can do between where your emotion happens and the thought starts. I'm going to start by looking around you and naming five things you can see. Once you've got that started, name four things you can touch. After that, name three things you can hear. Follow that with two things you can smell. 
and wrap it up with one thing you can taste. This process has the benefit of grounding you in the present moment, the here and now, and it also reminds you to keep grateful for the senses you still possess, which can help your emotional mood. Now you've got a handle on your emotions, it's time to start practicing realistic thinking instead of depressive, negative, distorted thinking. Distorted thinking, as we've seen, is all or nothing. It's either all good or all bad. Distorted thinking turns you into a mind reader or a fortune teller. I lost my job and my friends will think I'm a loser. Or I can't afford to be out of a job and I'll never find another one. Or catastrophizing. Without a paycheck, I'll starve and be homeless. Realistic thinking is more grounded and practical. You have to ground yourself emotionally first and then begin a realistic inner dialogue. Realistic thinking says, I got laid off because of budget cuts, not my job performance. Or, I put in 10 good years there and loyally, that counts for something. Or, I have plenty of marketable skills and finding a new job will take work, but it's totally doable. You've now handled your gut reaction feeling to the stressor. You grounded yourself emotionally and began telling yourself constructive thoughts that build you up instead of tearing you down. So now you act constructively and proactively. You start filling out resumes, you search job listings and put in applications. You may even decide to take some classes to bolster your degree and your prospects. You're starting to make a difference. Now this is where the rubber meets the road and the consequences of your action. If you've done the work of controlling your emotions and inner dialogue enough to enact positive, constructive, realistic, and proactive actions, then you will see the results. Granted, it's also good to maintain some realistic expectations on the possible outcome because life is life after all, and all of these new habits won't guarantee the desired outcome, but you'd still be miles ahead of anyone who's not even trying. Remember that. So you get the stress, it catches you in the feels, but you got this because you can control your emotions now, making you more apt to be more forgiving, realistic, and kind to yourself, giving credit where credit's due. You act responsibly and constructively. Within reasonable expectations, good things happen to you. Either you find a new job or add to your degree or network with people who can help you achieve. And that just reinforces you for the next go round. And now you see how you can Simply change. Break the cycle. Listen though, I'm going to tell you, there's nothing easy about this. It takes introspection, psychological and emotional work. And just like working out a muscle, it takes practice. But just as surely as you dropped into a habit of distorted thinking, you can just as simply change it and all for the better. There you have it, people. The ABCs of developing, practicing, and making positive, realistic, mindful habits instead of choosing to remain mired in negative and distorted thinking. Positive or negative, it's your choice. And now you see how, if you continue in modes of depressive thinking, you're doing it by choice. It fuels you somehow, or else you'd stop. Be a winner. Be the person that pats you on the back with an attaboy. Don't choose to be angry or depressed. Choose happiness. Choose to be constructive. Choose to love yourself. Choose to make a difference. Thanks for joining me. I hope this helps. Like, comment, subscribe if you if you if you feel that it touched you in some way, if it made sense. And uh, I appreciate you joining me, and I'll see you soon.